Would you believe me if I told you that this guy right here is the richest person in crypto? Sam Bankman-Fried is not your ordinary 29-year-old. The vegan crypto billionaire is also the CEO of the third largest crypto exchange in the world and responsible for up to $10 billion per day in crypto trading. Over the span of four years, he's been able to amass a net worth of over $16.2 billion. And that number might actually be higher if you take into account that Bankman Freed didn't really even discover Bitcoin until 2017. So in this video, I want to look into what this 29-year-old multi-billionaire has been able to do differently than almost everyone else. Born in 1992 in Stanford, California, both of his parents law professors at the university, Sam describes himself as a bit boring as a kid. He and his younger brother Gabe were introduced to utilitarianism at a young age by their parents. And this teaching, this mindset, has always stayed with Sam and remains at the forefront of all of his business ventures today. My parents were really concerned with, you know, what impact they were having on the world and and what they could do there, they've, they've tried to do a lot of things with their life, which has been really kind of inspiring to watch. However, it wasn't until he began studying physics at the Massachusetts Institute for Technology that Sam really began to grow into himself. Upon graduating from MIT in 2014, Sam had still never invested in Bitcoin. Deciding whether to go work for a charity organization or maybe a nonprofit he decided to accept a job at Jane Street Capital, a prestigious quaint trading firm slash liquidity provider on Wall Street. One thing you should ask is like, if there's some charity you think is cool, would they rather have you working for them or you donating money to them? Like, which, and obviously, again, for different people, it's different. But like, given my background, it sort of seemed like, well, actually, quantitative skills are a pretty good fit for at least what, what nowadays is, is often the careers. He figured in order to be able to donate large amounts of money, he first needed to make large amounts of money. It was here that Sam really began to understand quantitative finance, which is the use of mathematic models and massive data sets to analyze financial markets and securities. In 2017, with the crypto market starting to explode and three years of traditional investing under his belt, Bankman Freed identified an inefficiency in the crypto market, as there was an extremely large need to supply crypto liquidity to a rapidly growing global crypto market. Now, to understand what happened next, you need to have a general understanding of the term arbitrage. This is a word that gets used with everything from retail to sports betting. But at the core, it is the ability to find the same good or service that is selling at the same time at two different places for different amounts. Now, if you apply this concept to trading cryptocurrency, imagine that one Bitcoin is trading for $50,000 on exchange A and $45,000 on exchange B. Any reasonable person would identify that they could buy Bitcoin on exchange B and then resell it on exchange A for a $5,000 profit. Well, in 2017, this exact thing was happening. Literally, I literally just looked at coin market cap, you know, and I clicked on Bitcoin. And I saw these numbers like those aren't the same numbers, you know, like I see a list of exchanges and prices and the prices are different. And like, and that's not like complicated arbitrage or so I thought. I was like, literally that like nothing that simple ever happens. There was an enormous premium being paid on Bitcoin, Litecoin and other cryptocurrencies to the tune of 10, 20, even sometimes up to 30%. This was due to harsh regulations being established in China and Japan. For those of you who remember trading crypto in 2017, it was a little like having to connect to the internet with a dial-up modem. If you were in the US, you basically had one option, and that was Coinbase. But there was a waiting list, and once you waited and got on, chances are the first time you transferred money from your bank, your bank account got shut down. And then, if you wanted to increase your withdrawal limits on Coinbase, another three weeks of AML and KYC checks. And that was just for an American in America that already had a bank account for approval. Imagine what happens when an American that doesn't speak Japanese shows up in Japan to open a bank account where they will be moving millions of dollars per day. The sirens go off and they throw you out of the country. What you want to do is go buy Bitcoin, send it to Japan, sell it for yen, turn that to dollars, send it back. And then you just start 
hitting all these roadblocks. Actually, every single day, I would like to send like $5 million in the same direction from one currency to another one. This is the sketchiest fucking thing I've ever seen, right? Like in order to get a banking license, you have to like take a test. And it's like, if someone does exactly this, what are they doing? And you circle money laundering, right? But Sam knew this opportunity was too great to just pass on. We're literally talking about a 10% arbitrage with a trading volume of about $1 billion per day. That equates to roughly $100 million per day in profit. Now, what happens next is where the story gets really interesting. So one of the best parts about being a super smart workaholic nerd is that your friends are generally a lot like you. Realizing the opportunity of a lifetime, Alameda Research was born, an international crypto liquidity company with offices in Berkeley and Hong Kong. The origin of the company name, Alameda, for the city in the Bay Area of California where the venture started, and research because here you had a bunch of 20-year-olds trying to get international bank accounts. They felt the name research would sound better than Daily Million Dollar Crypto Arbitrage Company. According to Sam, everyone loves research. We know that Alameda Research is a crypto liquidity provider. But if you're like me, maybe you didn't know exactly what that means. One of the things it means is like, you know, if is it, it does arbitrage. And what's the connection between those? Well, if there's buyers on Bitstamp and sellers on Coinbase of Bitcoin, then you provide liquidity to the sellers on Coinbase by putting out bids. You provide liquidity to the buyers on Bitstamp by putting out offers. You make money by doing arbitrage and you help tighten spreads and you help keep things in line and provide actual coins for people to buy and dollars for people to sell into. With Alameda killing it, and Sam making more money than he ever thought was possible, it begs the question, why start the crypto exchange FTX? I mean, something that had been clear from the beginning was that exchanges make a lot of money in crypto. It seemed like a good business to be in. But in 2019, did we really need another cryptocurrency exchange? What was FTX able to do differently to separate themselves from the pack and quickly become a top five trading platform? All the derivatives exchanges sort of shit the bed at the same time. It's like hundreds of millions of dollars a year being lost to this. Smelling blood in the water, the FTX team attacked like a shark, not only taking over the lion's share of crypto derivatives trading, but also upgrading the user experience in the process. Today, not only is FTX number one for crypto futures and options trading, they have moved into the number three spot for total volume amongst all centralized crypto exchanges. 2021 has already been a massive year of growth for FTX, with some asking the question, how have they done it so fast? It's a lot of small things put together, a lot of decisions that we've made around how to build the product, trying to be as responsive as we can to customers, to regulators, to counterparties. Honestly, from our perspective, it's it sometimes feels like the world is just going sort of in slow motion around us and that we're going at, you know, about an average speed by our standards. Already this year, they have acquired the leading crypto news and portfolio management app, Blockfolio, for $150 million. They've also taken over crypto derivatives platform, LedgerX. In addition, they've inked endorsement deals with the likes of Tom Brady and Giselle Bunchen, as well as investment mogul, Kevin O'Leary. All major league umpires are now wearing FTX patches on their shirts, and they also own the naming rights to the Miami Heat Arena and the football field at Cal Berkeley. One thing's for sure, they are doing what is necessary to get the word out about FTX. Why is Sam Bankman-Fried the richest person in crypto? Well, he has major control over the supply, as well as where you can acquire it and the media sources that shape our opinions about the product. Quite a lot of power for one 29-year-old to have. You know, in the end, uh, on a longer time horizon, my goal is to, you know, have as much positive impact as I can on the world. And, you know, right now it seems like um, a big part of that's going to come through being able to donate to, uh, to organizations that do a lot of good. And so, you know, that sort of was one of the driving factors between getting involved in this in the first place was seeing an opportunity to be able to give a lot. If you want to see more videos like this, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up.